How's everybody doing? This is just a test room. And I want to talk about physics identity. Um, listening to this song, you want to see change. There's a question. You need to stop following the leader and become the leader to follow evidence. Now I have to redo this because I don't know if the video is correct. Um, we're going to talk about the paper that I was given by Dr. Mel Sabella. It confirms um, how identity can shape the student's uh, mentality towards uh, becoming successful in um, physics courses as well as uh, whether or not uh, the methods used will I want to say entice the student to continue on um, on a physics track. Now, there's a there's an identity framework that they utilize in the paper. Uh, recognition is the first. Um, they define recognition as a perceived recognition by others as being a good student or a good physics student. Then there's performance. Well, that's merely the belief and ability to perform on required physics tasks. That's the performance. The next criterion is interest. Interest to them is declared as a desire or curiosity to think about or and or in understand physics. Then the last one, because this is four in this framework, is competence. It's the belief and ability to understand physics content. And that's just all of the wonderful theories and um, axioms that uh, physics as a subject matter has to hold. Now, this is the framework they use to reconstruct or strengthen uh, identity. And the identity seems to be constructed in a fashion that allows for uh, non um, I'm trying to find a middle word for it. Those non-seeking uh, science uh, members and those seeking science members um, as a as a trade, as a, a, a curriculum to, or discipline to uptake, they utilize this framework to affect or massage how the student will matriculate in life. And there was a significant amount of information that was presented to prove that um, this just does not um, affect um, all students. They, they went on to show how it can affect genders. Um, males would perform in a manner that would uh, be primarily based upon their experiences. So the males will come in with a higher knowledge of science due to the fact that they may have read about it as a hobby or even, um, I don't know how else to put it, but they just had a natural affinity for sciences. Whereas females, they had more of an interpersonal help society morale based upon um, their location, their that moment of entry into high school uh, with several factors that affected them, but it, they weren't matched up to how the males were able to continuously matriculate through science education programs, whereas females at some point would have a high performance rating and um, being able to display physics content and um, capability. But at some point, the interest would wane and the female um, populace would deteriorate or become marginalized, for better speak. So they say that all the students in this category, even returning students or just audience members who have no idea of science, they say that a student's identity, a student's identity being anybody from teacher to papa to king to whomever, a student, human being, is based upon three characteristics or they had a vein diagram that showed how they interconnected but three characteristics personal identity 
This is related to the characteristics of the individual. Okay? Personal identity. Then a person's social identity. This is related to the characteristics as a member of that group. So whomever they're affiliated with also enhanced who they became or uh, degraded how they would uh, grow up in life. So, and then the last one was identification with physics or just identification as I like to call it with uh, your, your talent, whatever you choose it to be. So, that said, related characteristics, this is, I'm sorry, this category on identification with physics is related to characteristics of understanding the physics content. Now, this is a little bit convoluted of a statement for me because there's multiple things you can pull from that, especially when you're talking about performance, uh, going back to the framework that you utilize when you teach. So, if a person's performance is not up to, ba- up to date or up to par, the standard is within the classroom, as well as the instructor's evaluation, who's uh, presenting the information to the student. How can you really uh, grade this? It's problematic. So, I would think that um, I'm going to pause here. Uh, Mike, make sure you uh, re-edit the video and uh, present it for class when you get all the facts in order so far. You got all the facts in your head. You just need to work on one second. I want to talk about Nimrod. Nimrod Mike Tyler was Let's see if we can do this from memory. He um it's the name of a book. Reclaiming Nimrod. Um the reason you want to talk about uh, Nimrod is because the Fibonacci sequence, which was around way before the art of science or art of physics, developed by Isaac Newton. Sorry, Sir Isaac Newton. <laughs> Don't want to piss nobody off. Um, the Fibonacci sequence is around, and um, it predated physics technology. Now, now the, the Fibonacci system was created by the Kushites, who are of African descent. So, meditate that or massage that into your, your overall 10-minute dissertation of this article. Support this with document, not transcript. They got to figure out what I'm talking about. But just document. Nice little synopsis. It is October 13, 2012. So, for review, the name of the article before I leave was... Um, article was Connecting High School Physics Experiences, Outcome, Expectations, Physics Identity, and Physics Career Choice, Agenda Study, Hazari, Sonart, Sadler, Marie, uh, Shanahan. Uh, document was furnished by Dr. Mel Sabella, Department of Chemistry and Physics. Article is due for posting in two days. That's all. Stop it.